Uh, it says live. Okay, cool. So um, first of all, I want to welcome everybody back to the channel. Hey guys, today I've got Joe on. He's a huge advocate for the Project Digibyte. I, um, I did a review on them recently and I had a great response. So I figured I'd have him on to talk about it. So we are live. I can see it now. That's good news. And my fair warning, I was just telling Joe before we went live, my dog is in a particular kind of mood tonight. <laughs> so if you hear barking or anything, just please ignore that. <laughs> so welcome to the channel, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. This is cool. It's nice. It's um, It's been a while in the making. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Um, background, he's been helping me with internet problems because I've been having stream issues for like months now. I never really got it ironed out, but we've been chatting a lot and we just kept saying we were going to do it and saying we were going to do it. So I'm, I'm glad we finally found a time to sit down. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. My pleasure. So I know that you explain and you talk about the fact that you're not actually part of the team. So why don't you kind of give a background on how you got involved in Digibyte and what you do exactly and why? Yeah. So I originally started back in 2014 and around about, I think it was like mid-March, I started with mining Digibyte. And I, I guess part of the, the joys of being like decentralized and not having any kind of central controlling entity there's no one to really ask permission and say, hey, I want to go and I want to start speaking like on your behalf uh, at, at events or doing YouTube streams about you and, and, and things like that and, and educating the community. So mm -hmm. uh, long story short, I kind of I ended up taking a bit of a, a break from it back in the day in 2014, ended up going through some marriage issues, uh, started coming back and, and helping out and contributing a lot more around uh, early to mid 2017. And I've just kind of stuck around for some reason. Nobody ever seems to tell me to go away. So whatever, like, <laughs> here well, I am. I mean, it's good press. You do a good job. I mean, I, I thought when I heard about the project and I had first interacted with you, I was certain you were part of the team. So um, you definitely kind of command, I guess, that kind of feeling because you obviously have been around. I didn't know you were in the space that long, but that's pretty remarkable. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's kind of, I mean, in saying that I kind of am part of the team, but I'm not because it's, it's, everybody who, who wants to participate basically is the team. So if you're holding Digibyte, if you're using Digibyte, if you like it, if you follow it on Blockfolio Signal, if you follow us on Twitter, I guess that kind of makes you part of the team, right? Like, so even even you, if you want to be having me on the channel makes you part of the team. I think that's something really cool. Like it's, it's a complete, complete mind shift from what people are mostly used to. Yeah, well, that's the fun thing about crypto. And that's kind of something that I always talk about is like the space is so we all, for the most part, there is some tribalism, but it's all usually in good fun and everybody's very supportive. Yeah. And, you know, we all want to see progress and we all get involved in these things. And a lot of people do work like you do, which is just like volunteer work, just getting involved, doing stuff that you're passionate about. So mm -hmm. um, that's a pretty cool, pretty cool thought process to have. Um, so I guess why Digibyte? You know, when you started, there wasn't a sea of other projects out there, but now there yeah. are. So why are you still <laughs> kind of working with them? So what are we at now? It's like 8,000 8, different cryptocurrencies and tokens and ICOs and things. I, I, I honestly, I have no idea and I don't want to guess because I'm probably <laughs> going to be wrong. It's like, that's a lot. So I remember back in the days when CoinMarketCap was like a couple hundred kind of thing. Yeah. Like, and that was, uh, those, those were the good old days. Should I remember even when it was even, even smaller than that? And there was uh, a few dozen really. Yeah. Um, I, I, I got into it like, so I found out about Bitcoin, right? And and like most people, I'm like, you can print money from your computer. This sounds amazing. I, I, I came across like some Bitcoin talk threads. Uh, I got myself a couple graphics cards and then started mining Bitcoin. Unfortunately, that was right as the FPGAs and the ASICs were coming to market. So the graphics cards all of a sudden were pretty much useless. Yeah. Uh, so I found Litecoin and I was like, I'm a clever person and I understand this is faster. This is, it's got a bigger max supply the faster block time and double the block size. Like I'm smart. I know that this is going to go places. <laughs> I'm clever, right? Anyway, so I started mining it and I was, it was okay. I mined it for like a week or two. And then I came across Digibyte when I was looking on the, um, on the Bitcoin talk forums because they just helped with the mine for mud and they were doing, uh, they were helping out the Dogecoin guys as well with their uh, DigiShield implementation. And so actually, I think this was one of the things that, that came up in one of the, the questions on Twitter. Somebody was like, what are your thoughts on like developers helping other developers? And this is something that the Digibyte devs have done ever since the beginning. Like they literally saved Dogecoin with DigiShield and helping them implement it because of all of the problems back in the day. Um, so anyway, I came across the project back then and I was like, this is cool. Like, so I'm clever and I understand, right? Like Litecoin is faster than Bitcoin. You've got double the block size, and then I'm looking at Digibyte, and I'm going 60 second blocks uh, uh, block timing. 
again, I'm smart. I know what's going <laughs> to happen here, right? Like this is good. We've got a bigger max supply. It's 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 better for the the whole world if we've got let's say 8 billion people, that means that each person can have three digi buys sort of thing split between them rather than 0. 0.000 of a Bitcoin, for example. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my train of thought. And I, I kind of, I stuck around the project. I started mining it. And uh, although I kind of, I took a little bit of a break in general from crypto back in 2014 to 2015, uh, I kind of, as, as soon as my interest got peaked again, I got a little bit of more spare time a couple of years ago. And I'm like, this is, obviously where I'm going to go back to. Why, why would I go back to, to Bitcoin when, when I've kind of seen the light, I suppose, as it were. Sure. Um, so yeah, here we are today. And, and, and the, especially as, as, as things have gone on over time, like with the additional improvements and things, that's one of the things that's really kept me uh, impressed is that it's not just like, here you go. Here's, here's did you buy? We're done. Mm -hmm. it, it has been a constant progression, a constant evolution and a constantly new, uh, improvements and upgrades and things to the blockchain and 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 I think that's actually something that's really quite cool is is especially with uh, Jared staying involved over the last five years where we see other people like Dan Larimer coming in and then up and disappearing and oh, we've got bit cheers Ex exactly like it's it is a meme really these days yeah. like it's but but so he's stuck around and and some of the other core developers that have have been around literally since 2014 I'm still talking with them like on a daily basis about all of the stuff that we're doing right now, like digi assets, auto crypto and things like that. And so that's, that's really cool to see that kind of like that longevity and the dedication over time. I think that speaks volumes. Yeah. I think also, you know, what you mentioned about sort of like community um, is, you know, obviously Bitcoin, Bitcoin in itself has a community. I feel like it's like the overarching crypto community, but when, yeah. what we see with these other projects that have started afterwards is like, there's more of a tight knit, you know, because obviously nobody knows who Satoshi is, so we can't go ask him questions. So I feel like that's <laughs> one of the defining reasons why Bitcoin's community is so like vast and spread out. Whereas we see with other projects where developers are still involved and there's still still like a line, you know, a line of sight to who designed the project. There yeah. is more of a community feature to it, which is, you know, obviously part of what Digibytes got going for it, obviously. Um, and then also... The, the fact that you can see the development. The one thing I really like about older projects is a, there's no ICO usually, and there's no, mm. um, hopefully no like Insta mine or anything like that. And then we get to see <laughs> there's, that. There's progress. exceptions to the rules, obviously yeah. Yeah, for everything, but yeah, of but course for but the most part, yeah, progress, right. Because like you got, like you said, you guys have been around for what, five years. So you've got yeah. a jump start on everybody else. And while projects are still, one two years out from their genesis we've got you guys who have been doing this for a long time so we can actually see it's like a snapshot of hopefully what the future is going to look like with other projects too which is being able to follow, follow the development train and hopefully everybody's still being really involved developers helping helping each other stuff like that's mm -hmm. really um inspiring because you've been around for so long you had the ability to do that kind of stuff that's a cool thought i've never actually sort of like stopped to kind of like look at it in that kind of a perspective i like that that's cool yeah, well, I mean, I just, you know, you have what others don't have, which is time, right? You know, you, you get to, yeah. you, you, we can't really compare your project necessarily to the newer stuff, because there's just been so much more time that's passed, which I think is definitely a strength. So it depends on who you ask, I guess, like, <laughs> there's, there's yeah, certainly no, some true. people and they're like, look, you've been around for five years, and you're only what, like number 40 on coin market cap, like, what the hell have you guys been doing? Yeah, sure. And we, we, we get shade thrown, especially a lot from like the XRP community, like, what the hell have you guys been doing for the last five years? It's like, well, I mean, we can't pay like $4 million and get ourselves on the Ellen DeGeneres show, like we don't have $4 million sitting yeah in the bank but you know like we've been busy actually doing other cool stuff so it's 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 funny because there's there's definitely those two kind of like perspectives and i'm sure you probably see a lot of this as well with all of the different projects and things that you come across and you review there's there are some that are very much like here's the old way of thinking and we're just kind of kind of do this but on a blockchain or here's a new way of thinking and we're going to completely reinvent the wheel and do everything different and it requires a mindset change and a change in understanding sure. and yeah like i mean i'm i'm not gonna argue and say one's one's right and the other's wrong because that's definitely not the case but it's certainly easier for people to to go right i i know what banking is and i understand banks and this project wants to work with banks that makes sense to me without actually stopping to think about like the implications and the ramifications of what it is that they're saying or insinuating or the project and things. So, yeah, no, absolutely. And 
You know, that's like that argument. I, I feel like the space is right now very small, but I think that there's going to be, ideally there's going to be a spot for projects dif of differing opinions, right? Everybody's going to serve their own purpose. Um, I do wish that projects maybe that didn't see eye to eye weren't so, uh, I guess, negative to one another, you know, kind of speaking, <laughs> sp speaking in broad terms here. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I agree yeah. with you. There's definitely, humans are black and white anyways. We think black and white. So uh, naturally, the way we process stuff within this community is also going to be black and white, unfortunately. Yeah. And it also, it doesn't help. Like the thing is, is I guess we're all like, we're here and we're talking about people's money. And so this is mm -hmm. not just like your favorite sports team where, you know, you get to go along and you get to watch them each season. This is literally like, if, if this turns to shit, your money's gone. Yeah. Like it's, it's gone. And so it's interesting as well. Cause we see things like with, with, BitConnect and people were just so obsessed with it. Like, this is going to be the biggest thing ever. And I'm going to go take a mortgage out of my house. And, and you see people like that, right? And if you're, if you're analytical and you're looking at it from the outside in and you're going, this is literally, this has all the markings of a Ponzi scheme. It's, it's that kind of, I suppose, that analytical part of people's brains that just seems to go out the window when they're like, I found something I'm putting money into it this is going to succeed because I think it's going to succeed because I've done my own research and now I've gone and found a project, right? And by doing my own research basically means like I found a white paper and it had a really pretty picture on the front of it. And that's, that's basically it. Right, and like, this makes it. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, I mean, that's kind of interesting because that's something that we obviously haven't had. And you mentioned that as a really yeah. good point in your, in your uh, review was that there is no white paper. We don't have a white paper that says, this is why you should like Digibyte. This is why we, made these decisions like along the way this is why it makes sense um and and yeah like so i guess that's one of like that's our, one of our weak spots that that people often look for and, and we have to literally start from the beginning and educate every single person that comes along about why there isn't one and that's tiring i yes. tell you that is <laughs> it's also you know people are also skeptical for the exact reason that you mentioned before right so bitconnect existed it took people's money everybody's always on high alert for ico scams or just anything that seems too good to be true and we've gotten into this kind of thought process that you know we find a project we read the white paper so when i went to go start doing the research on digibyte i'm like oh crap they don't have a white paper There's this no is gonna be really paper. difficult but yep. in your defense <laughs> as i mentioned in the review you guys do have a ton of other like a whole wiki and a whole ton of information yep. that is out there and available but people still want to like come to expect a certain thing that yeah piece of paper that exactly. they can just sit down like you can print it out sit there and read it and I, I, yeah, like, so, I mean, that was, that was one of the things I kind of mentioned to you that I've actually been working on what I've kind of dubbed like a community white paper. I actually started, um, I got on the beers right before New Year's Eve and, and smashed out like a dozen pages worth of it. Um, did I end up sending that to you? You sent me a part of it. Yeah. Okay. And so, so that was kind of it. And I've kind of just like lifted over to one side, but it's interesting because you bringing that back up when you were talking about it made me kind of realize, especially as we go into another bull run, even if this isn't like an official white paper that came out at the same time, like we have the Bitcoin white paper from Satoshi Nakamoto himself. Does it really matter? Or does this actually speak more volumes to the whole aspect of being a decentralized community? And so it's, I don't really have the answer, but I'm kind of like, maybe I'll finish it off and we'll, we'll publish it or something. So. Yeah, I mean, it can't hurt <laughs> to have it and you can always add to it. And and from my perspective, for me, what I'm always interested in is the history of something. Like, yeah. why did it start? What goals are you trying to solve? What? How are you going to do that? You know, what was the, the, the creator's thought process behind the project? That's the stuff like that when I started doing reviews in the first place, I've kind of gotten off base a little bit, but that's always the stuff that interested <laughs> me the most. And so... Yeah. When, when I find projects that have that information, I I'm really pumped about it. But again, like your wiki had a ton of background information anyways. So that was still pretty useful. Yeah. I mean, that's actually, we've only, I, I think I put that wiki together originally back last year. Uh, shit, I think it's only like six months old now. Um, but it's been really cool because we've had the community come through. Like, so if I bring this up, I think actually you mentioning there is a, like an actual, like a, a history Mm -hmm. So I suppose in lieu of not having a, a white paper, having that history aspect would probably be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, it, it, it could never hurt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's something to think about. Something, something for us to work on, I suppose, though. It's, it's yeah. So, I mean, besides this, you know, the, the ambiguous white paper, what, what else are you guys working on right now that you're most excited about? Right. So 
Uh, well, I'm I'm personally super excited about Otocrypt. Like, I'm really, really excited about this. Um, mostly because it is like it, it speaks to me as a miner. I like the idea of something being ASIC resistant. Not so much because I'm anti ASIC, but because I think that there's a place for how do I how do I phrase this like nice and politely? I think there's a place for ASICs, and I think they do a great job, right? Like they 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 need to be there to secure the network. And so what we have, especially with Bitcoin, is Bitcoin has the biggest mass of SHA-256 ASIC miners. Mm -hmm. And if you were to try to attack the network, that's going to be problematic because you've effectively got to buy all that hardware or rent it usually on an hourly basis, for example. And there's simply not enough out there for people to rent. So as a, uh, like we, we see the same even with Litecoin, for example, but then if you were to take something that is GPU only, Obviously, we've seen with the likes of Bitcoin Gold, that's a problem. And so, again, it's it's nice that, 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 that GPU mining helps contribute to the decentralization aspect and things like that. It's going to be running on people's computers. They're going to download a node. They're going to start mining and, and stuff like that. But at the same time, it doesn't help the security in terms of like the raw hash power and the dollar value needed if you were to try and attack the network. So that's kind of where I like... I like the fact that we've got our five algorithms and now we're going to have our first FPGA specific and GPU mineable algorithm that is anti-ASIC, that changes itself every 10 days, that you could build an ASIC for, but effectively you're just going to be building an FPGA anyway, so why bother? Why not just use off-the-shelf stuff and save yourself like a couple million bucks in development time? Um, like that's that's kind of my thoughts behind it and so that's why like i'm super pumped for this um and i think it's going to be really cool it's going to it's going to get a lot of people into the idea that you can go out and you can buy this little circuit board plug it into your computer and start mining with this without having to have a whole lot of technical knowledge but at the same mm -hmm. time it's going to contribute very directly to the security of digibyte so yeah, yeah. And i mean speaking from experience when i got into the space the first thing i tried to do was mine and that was not effective because as you said it's just it's not for the major coins now, it's not really lucrative anymore. And so, you know, if I had flash forward, you guys had this and that little chip plug into the computer, whatever, I probably would have entertained the idea of that because that's a little bit more user friendly. And that definitely um, brings down the entry barrier for the average person, maybe, or just maybe the slightly tech advanced person yeah. that wants to get into it. So that's pretty well, cool. When, when you, you've been around for like a while, right? Like, so do you remember the, um, what, what were they, the, the little USB one, butterfly labs? Do you remember those? Uh, vaguely. Okay, so the Butterfly Labs one was a really cool because you could literally take it and just slot it in as a USB into the side of your PC, and now that is like it, it was an ASIC. Um, but the thing, like with I suppose with ASICs, is the huge barrier to entry for most people. Like I don't know about you, but I don't feel like going out and forking over like what was it fifteen thousand US dollars for the original uh, what was it ETH hash ASICs? I don't have fifteen grand spare. <laughs> like, no, no. But if if I were to go to you and go, hey, well, look, if you want to mine. You can get yourself this little FPGA. It's going to cost you about 150 bucks. You go, 150 bucks. Maybe I don't go out this weekend instead, and I'll buy myself a, an FPGA miner. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Mm -hmm. Like, like that's that's a lot more bearable, like a lot more palatable for a lot more people. Oh, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Because otherwise, I mean, even if we're talking like two or three grand, most people that I know of would probably go, oh, I don't want to buy an ASIC for two or three grand. Like, I don't know if it's if it's going to be worth anything six months from now, like what the returns are going to be, that's a pretty big commitment. And so that's personally for me as well, why I've always avoided A6. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a huge, that's a huge expense, especially for someone who like, let's say you're not mathematically inclined, trying to math out what your, you know, your break even price for that is for how much you have to mine for how long versus if it's still going to be profitable, even at that point, because the technology is always changing. So um, yeah, no, I, I definitely think that the offering of, being able to do that with with Digibyte is definitely more appealing um, than than the latter option and significantly yeah. less expensive. So it's it's nice being Multiago and I, and I kind of I harp on a little bit of, of like about this, but mm -hmm. being able to go right, we're gonna keep our our ASICs over here. We're gonna keep the hash power and 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 the likes that these offer specifically. But at the same time, we're also going to cater to this particular part of the market. We're going to further increase our security by doing this. So it's it's nice to be able to offer like spread across the five different algorithms. Yeah, and things. absolutely. So, yeah. so um, I, and I know. Okay, so actually, I had a community question on this. Somebody wanted to know what led to the decision to create the Autocrypt algorithm in the first place. That's an interesting one. Um, 
a couple of things. I, I, I think this is a combination of a, of a few things. Now, I have I've actually talked with um, one of the original, like the the author behind it. Um, dude is a freaking genius who also helped to pioneer DigiShield. So, mm -hmm. a combination of things, specifically like number one, the the idea that um, it's going to be easier for people to participate in is a pretty big one. Uh, number two being FPGA um, means that it's got a very low barrier to entry. But again, that kind of comes back to the first one. But it also means that it's reprogrammable. And so because it's reprogrammable, this also, in addition, means that it's 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 something that we can put in there that we can potentially release out to the whole Well, It's going to be released to the whole world when we implement it, I suppose, um, that other blockchains themselves could implement if they wanted to as an ASIC resistant algorithm. So there's a, like a combination of a whole bunch of things and they're all incredibly idealistic and I love it to bits. I think it's super cool. Um, just on That's so great, many though. different levels. Yeah. I mean, it's good to see passion and, 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 you know, genuine passion about these things in this space because I mean, you know, talking about algorithms and things like that can be very dry, but when you, when you personalize it to more realistic and kind of uh, digestible terms like that, I think it makes it, I think it makes it more appealing to people. So actually, I'll chuck this in the chat now. If you are interested, shimmygwiki.com for info. I know. I always try to chat and write in the in the chat box, and it's. I'm it's the world's the most terrible multitasker because I have the attention span of fucking goldfish. So, <laughs> um, I've, yeah, if if people are interested, I've put some information. I've like I've started to put information on the dgbwiki.com about if is under the Autocrypt uh, page. So there are links if you want to get yourself um, your hands on some of them. Now, keep in mind, obviously, that FPGAs, they're not all, it's not kind of like buying a CPU and you can just, you know, you're going to slot it into your computer. It's going to be specifically programmed for it. And so there are a couple that we've already got support for that I've got links to there that if people are interested and they're really curious and they want to try it out, like, obviously, I make no promises about any kind of profitability or return on investment or anything at all like that. Because for all I know, the four that I've basically gone and bought are basically going to be paperweights. That's kind of my theory. If you come at it with that kind of mentality at the moment because we're still in testing, cool. If you just want to test it out and have some fun, this is a lot of fun. And it's I've, I've had a blast doing it. Um, but obviously, don't go out and buy it and think, right, I'm going to get my return on investment after 120 days and, and things like that. Like, just, just don't. Just don't. So. Yeah. Yeah. The whole never, never put money or never invest what you're willing to lose. And a lot, in a lot of ways, that applies to a lot of different things in this space. So that's good that you, uh, your little disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm obviously terrible because at the same time I went and I threw a buttload of money um, specifically, and so so when I I sold my house back in 2017, that was kind of why I got got interested in it. And a mate of mine was talking to me, and he's like, "Why don't you go and buy some cryptocurrency?" And I was like, "Actually, why don't I go and I mine it?" So I literally took the mm -hmm. like I took a loss on selling my house at the time, uh, a whole lot of reasons, but I took what little I had left over from that and and bought a whole bunch of mining gear, and so I was mining digibyte and i've still got like a truckload of graphics cards sitting there that's not doing awesome, anything yeah. right now because it's um not profitable for graphics cards to mine right now <laughs> <laughs> but what can you do right yeah no i know um so tell me a bit about <laughs> digi assets and when you think the implementation of something like that's going to go live okay so Technically, we've already been issuing assets on mainnet, and I issued one. I, I don't know if you saw it, but I, I put a tweet out, like uh, I think it was like two weeks ago now, and I show people what it would look like if you were to issue uh, asset, like with, say, for example, you want to issue an asset for Elton John's like Golden World Tour or something. I think it was like it's his mm -hmm. last tour, and so the theory behind this was this will show people what it would look like if you were to, to issue an asset on the blockchain. So I took a couple of screenshots, showed them how simple it was. There's like five fields, it's dead easy. And then the idea being that you could rock on up with your cell phone to the event on the day, scan a little QR code, it would then send that asset back to them. And all of a sudden you've eliminated uh, not just ticket scalping, but you've also eliminated like the whole man in the middle. You've sorted out the identification aspect of fraud and things like that as well. And you've done this in a really like a fast and a secure way. There, there, there are so many kind of aspects to this and, and, and uh, it's, what, what's the best way of describing this? This is going to change the world once we start tokenizing things. Mm -hmm. So, because at the moment, like if you wanted to go to Elton John's world tour, 
there are ticket scalpers out there. Like, I mean, so we've, we've seen, for example, even things like, especially on the Binance Launchpad and stuff like that, people basically run bots. So as soon as something is available and it's on the website, their bots will go and buy it. That pushes the likes of you and me out of the market because I can't even type my credit card details in to buy a ticket that quickly, let alone go through and fill out the form and put in yeah. my name. And they're like, look, I've sold out in seven seconds. How can you sell out tickets in seven seconds when there's like 50,000 of them and I can't put my credit card in that mm -hmm. quickly? I actually experienced that with uh, sneakers I was trying to buy online. I couldn't get through. Yep. And within like, I don't know, a minute, everything was sold out. And it was like, a. I was like, this is asinine. And I actually learned after that, that it was bots. I didn't know this was quite a while ago, but yeah. yeah. So it's definitely a frustrating issue. Right. And so now those bots are going to take that, right? They're going to take those sneakers. They're going to take those tickets to Elton John's world tour. And they're going to then put them up on what is effectively, I mean, it's not the black market, but we're talking at secondhand sales and things mm -hmm. like that. So if you are going to be buying this Elton John World Tour ticket off of a off of a website, like let's say it's eBay. You go to eBay, you don't really know if this person's kind of taken that ticket and also made like three copies of it and given you one and given their friend one and given their mom one or something like that, right? So you're kind of you're not really too sure because it could be a duplicate. But if it's an asset on the blockchain, not only can you see it originally like being created, so we can say, right, there's twenty five thousand seats in this stadium. So 25,000 tickets, you can immediately verify they haven't oversold. Cool, 25,000 tickets, perfect. Now what you can also do is if you are the venue, you can basically say, if you send the ticket to anybody else, we will not accept it. You've solved ticket scalping then because they can see, right, so it came from the original wallet and it's gone over here to Joe. It's come from the original wallet, it's gone over here to Alex. Like this is, it's, it's visible by everybody. You can then see, right, the ticket has now been sent one more time back to us. And so it's a valid ticket. It hasn't been scalped. It hasn't been on sold. You've solved ticket scalping. Like mm -hmm. literally there's no point in having a bot go out there yeah. because they like it's, it, it is completely futile. You've solved ticket scalping. You've solved the fact that your, your shoes or your ticket now to Elton John's world tour would have potentially cost you like, let's say 500, $600 when the original tickets were only a hundred bucks. Like this is great for consumers as well. Yeah. It's so great for think, consumers and it's great for, I mean, just about everybody involved really because it's going to prevent you know it's going to not that like the people that are selling the tickets are necessarily losing money but they realize that the situation is unfair and that's going to be yep. maybe a deterrent for people to want to buy stuff um yep. because they know that they're not going to be able to get in on, on, on it because of the bots so uh, it definitely makes it more honest the whole process a bit more honest and fair which is obviously the whole kind of point of the movement yeah <laughs> i mean i suppose yeah. Well, the flip side is right. Like, so I, I don't know if, if this is how it works if you ticket master or anything like that, but let's say hypothetically they're pricing in the fact that the tickets are slightly cheaper because they know that they are going to be scalped and bumped up in price. Now they don't have to do that. Or maybe they can make the price like slightly higher because they know that you've got this validation and this certainty that your ticket is 100% genuine and authentic and it hasn't been duplicated or counterfeited or anything like that. Like they can save themselves so much time as well because we show up at the venue, you scan the QR code, it gets sent back. You no longer have to go, oh, I've got to dig around in my wallet and things and pull out my identification, prove that I am you know, Bob Jones who's gone and bought this ticket and, and show that to you and uh, it's, it's kind of dark here at night, so let me just grab my flashlight and mm -hmm. I'm a security guard and I'm going to check your, your ID and things and shit, that was a little while ago. You don't really look like you anymore. Is this really, you know, like you've yeah. done away with all of that. It's literally you just you walk in, you scan the QR code, and you walk through the turnstile, and you're done. Yeah, definitely faster. Someone in the comments would like to know if if you would be able to support being able to like gift or give a ticket to somebody. Kind of, and so I mean, I mean the the thing is, is there's going to be certain ways around that, obviously. So what you could do is you could, um, if let's let's say for example this like let's let's take this world tour of Elton John's. You can't make it. What you could potentially then do is contact the venue directly or contact the, the issuer, sorry, and say, look, I can't make it because my wife's just going into labor and mm -hmm. and I, I can't make it. So will you allow this particular one ticket? You can see here, I've bought one ticket. I haven't gone and bought 10 tickets. I only bought the one, but I can't make it. Will you allow me to send this on? And they could probably basically then whitelist that address and go, yeah, sure, you can send it on to this address. And so, so all of that sort of thing is still definitely doable. Um, but this is, you basically, you solve ticket scalping by the, yeah. the sheer fact that you can't go out and have 10 bots or buying 10 tickets. You've got a hundred tickets and yeah. So I think that's, I think that's really cool. Like that's, we've just talked about just like one use case. 
and how practical that one thing alone could be for digi assets. So I'm so excited for it. Um, and this this was basically why I chose that as the asset that I've already issued on the main net. It's not worth anything. No one's ever going to take those assets from me. Because, but but in terms of it being like a nice test, right? Like, yeah. like that's cool. I was yeah, talking no. with some other guys as well, and, and they basically were like, "This is this is going to be really cool for YouTubers. Like, you could you could issue a crypto candor asset and basically go right. Well, anybody who, like who is putting thoughtful comments and things in the comment section, if you include your address, I'll send you one of these. And then what we'll do once a month is we'll have like a bit of a vote, and you can send these assets back to me. And based on like one, two, three, four different addresses, if you send it to this address, I'll do a review on Digibyte. If you send it to this address, I'll do a, a review on Bitcoin or, you know, things like that. So there yeah. are a whole lot of really practical kind of ways that we can use these to like, not only to save us money, but to like engage with the community, the auditability and things like that as well. Mm -hmm. Your community can then see very transparently with there's four different addresses and this particular address, which you said was gonna be for a Digibyte review has the most coins been sent to it. So cool, yeah, you'll do it. That is cool, I didn't, I didn't think of that use case. That's definitely interesting. I, I like anything like that, any project that's tokenizing assets, I think is an amazing use case for blockchain technology. So I'm, mm. I'm a big proponent for that. Um, I recently made, or not I made, but um, Altcoin Buzz made um, collectibles on the engine platform and they may actually made me my own little collectible, which is pretty cool. So nice. I, have like a, I have like a Pokemon card version of myself, which is pretty neat. That's right, uh, I saw that, that was cool. Yeah, yeah, so so that the whole the whole concept is really useful. Um, and, and as you said, if you're creative, you can come up with some really, uh, you know, good, good, easy, fun ways to use it, so. Yeah, so like this is going to be like let's let's say have it like let's keep going down this train, right? This is cool for you, I guess, because you could do something like that. Mm -hmm. You can already do that with Ethereum and things like that, but it's a pain in the ass. Let's be honest. Like you need a science degree most of the time, and this is why there are like I remember Ivan on Tech. He was like, "Yeah, I've got and I've shown people how to issue an asset. I'm a programmer. Like that's cool. You're a programmer. I'm not. Yeah, I'm and, certainly not. <laughs> yeah, right. But if you've got it on your wallet. And on your, on, like inside your, your cell phone in the Digibyte app, and you can go in there and you can go, this is going to be Crypto Candor, and I'm going to issue like a thousand of them. And you'll put a picture in. Like you can do that, and I can do that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's literally that easy. So you can go in if you want and issue that asset. And now all of a sudden, you've got this. What's the best way of describing it? Because I, I hate using the word like mass adoption. I hate that word, but you've got that ease like of distribution. Yeah, exactly. Because you can you do it right from your cell phone. You don't even yeah. have to be sitting at your PC. You don't have to know a whole lot about how Ethereum works and all that sort of jazz, but you can literally issue it from your cell phone. That's convenient. And I think yeah, that convenience convenient. is going to be huge. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I, um, I forget what video I just recently did, but I was saying, Oh, brave. Cause brave added iOS, um, for their sync option. And I was saying how I use my phone so much more than my computer for everything. So anytime yep. there's like iOS adoption or, or apps or whatever, I'll always at least test them out. So I think for the average person having that availability on the mobile phone is going to make a huge difference. And as you said, it's just going to be easier. It's going to lower uh, barriers to entry for people. And I think that's most important because that's how you get people to use things. If it's easy and it's effortless, then people are going to use it. If there's, if there's a hurdle, mm -hmm. no one's going to want to bother. Yeah, well, I mean, exactly. Like, so that hurdle is is precisely why we went and we gone and we translated the wallet. We're in like 56, 57 languages, like natively on your mm -hmm. cell phone. The idea being like, if you're in Venezuela, like this is cool and all that, that we hear people talking about Dash going over there and doing something with KFC, whatever. But as far as I'm aware, the mobile wallet's still only in English. Like, that's not cool. I mean, I yeah. may be wrong. Maybe they have got it translated now. If so, then great. All power to them. I think that's fantastic. But if, if, we're really going to be doing stuff like we were over in Venezuela, like where we've gone and we've got kids in schools that are using tablets that have the Digibyte wallet on it. It's got to be in their native language. I mean, yeah, sure. The, the kids over there are also learning uh, English and things with uh, Duolingo and, and the likes on these tablets. That was part of the reason why we got them with David Hay. But first and foremost, they don't speak English. Yeah. They speak Spanish. It's got to be in their native language. Yeah. Talk and about so a barrier to entry. <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. I mean, even the the introduction on a lot of wallets is just in English, and it's like yeah. that's cool and all. But if you're like, okay, I fire this up and I'm in Japan, and I I speak specifically just Japanese. A lot of people obviously speak English there, but but you you know what I mean, like. This is a big barrier to entry, and so we're stopping people from being able to adopt this kind of thing simply because it's not in their language. So I'm I'm super proud of the team and the work that they've done for for the translations. It was a huge community effort, and it's awesome. Yeah, no, I mean I think it's I think it's great that um, very and very useful. Someone wants to know when you think it's going to launch. Oh, DGS is right. So. <sighs> It's really hard. I was actually talking with some of the guys today about um have you you've seen Coin Market Calendar? Yeah. So on that website right now, if you're gonna list something, you've got to list when it will launch by. And you can do like Q1, Q2 kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but the problem is is this is obviously this is open source development and it's decentralized development. So it's not just like there's one particular company and we have people working 40 hours every yeah. week. And in fact, I think the, the best example is probably our mobile wallets themselves, because originally we were we were a fork uh, of the bread wallet, the same as like Litecoin is with your loaf wallet. We were going to release it in Q4 2017, but we didn't. We didn't end up releasing it until Q2 2018. And that's because we decided we're like, you know what? Number one, we're going to go through and we're going to squash a shitload of bugs. Number mm -hmm. two, we're going to go through and we're going to improve the number of devices that it's supported on. So for the Android one, we went from like 45% device support to like 97% device support. Then number three, we did the community UI overhaul. So we actually ran a contest for people to do um, like like submit what they wanted it to look like. And then we had the developers go and actually build it to look like the, the winning. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, like so it was it was awesome. Um but so had we gone and put up Q4 2017, we would have a lot of incredibly incredibly disappointed people. When will Digi Assets actually launch? Sooner than you think, I guess. So we're coming out with a test net really soon. Um part of the reason that we've had some fun with Digi Explorer is because we've been migrating it to also include the Digi Assets stuff. It's coming out on testnet real soon, and we're going to have people talking a lot more about it, specifically being talked about this month. I don't want to say we're going to release it this month. This is a, yeah. Use your words carefully. Uh, we, we will be talking a lot more about it this month. Well, that's good. I've already... Yeah, I've already got like medium articles on on how people can install it and things like that, so it's all basically ready to go. We're tidying up a bunch of stuff first and foremost before we unleash it on the masses but if you're clever you'll go like this is this is open source if you're clever you'll go scouring github and find it right like it's not like yeah. it's being hidden away so <laughs> if you if you're really curious and you want to run something that's still not 100 percent functioning like we want it to when we do release it you can find it and go be curious go find it um it's out there so yeah <laughs> Um, so I have a question from a guy in the comments, Joshua. He says, I work for a large tech company. Currently, they are working with the top 20. They are working with a top 20 crypto for blockchain solutions. I was wondering how Digibyte positions itself to be better recognized for their tech and blockchain. That is a fantastic question. Um, it's obviously difficult because we don't have any one central entity that does the marketing and things. Sorry if you can hear a motorbike. I think my flatmate's just shown up home. <laughs> Um, but at the same time, we have a community and we have an incredibly passionate community. Like a lot of people are like, yeah, our community is the best. Well, yeah, maybe, but I'm also really biased and I like ours too. So I'm going to jump on that bandwagon and say exactly the same thing <laughs> to the point where we had, um, what's his name? Brian Armstrong from Coinbase accusing mm -hmm. us of spamming. He asked a genuine question. He's like, yo, so when are you like, what do you guys want to hear from me? And the Digibyte community are like, why are you listing this? And why are you listing this when, when you could be listing Digibyte? Mm -hmm. like, and he thought that that was spam, I suppose, because he's used to the Ripple spam bots that are on Twitter. But I did experience something very similar with another project that I kind of, I guess I responded to a little hastily. Um, so I could, probably, really. yeah, I could probably see where that came from. But I, I mean, in my experience, uh, I got good feedback from the community, like good normal interaction, but it wasn't too much. Right. And there's yeah, it's it's a tough one. It's 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 a fine balance between spamming and between yeah, 
yeah anyway okay so but but anyway back to the question so i think the community are about to be a lot more actively involved and a lot more actively engaged in, in this kind of thing uh we have other what's the best way of wording this we've we've got a large exchange has actually gone and written some like a, a little it's not it's not a white paper but it's a document that describes how secure digibyte is with our multi-shield and things like that uh, we've actually been waiting on that to come out now for about two months. They're they're putting it through a huge review process internally. Um, but that sort of thing is also going to help. And I think we're going to see a lot more a lot more other third party entities taking that kind of ownership and basically going, you know what, we can actually tell people about Digibuy. And we've got a particular entity who's already in the process of doing that. I don't want to kind of go and name names and things like that, but mm -hmm. We're, we're going to see a lot more about it. Um, keep your eye on the Digi Summit, I suppose, is coming out uh, in a couple of weeks. And Digi Summit itself as well, we're going to have a bit more uh, things happening there. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, so, I mean, that kind of, I guess, maybe not necessarily answers this question. I'm just going to skip over what I had pre-made for you. And I'm yeah. going to just do the community questions because I think that's what they want to hear anyway. So... Um, yeah. What what do you think the biggest obstacle is preventing Digibyte from being a top five or top ten coin? Um, so actually, one of the interesting things is if if people look back, you can actually go back to the coin market cap um, like history and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We were actually in the top ten very briefly uh, back in two thousand and seventeen, I think. Oh, okay. Now, a lot of that came down to a bunch of like, it was the perfect storm of things happening all at once. So number one, there was a meme contest that happened at the time on Reddit. Number two, we had the uh, Digibyte Minecraft server thing happening. And there was a lot of misinformation around that. And people kind of thought that we were specifically partnering with Microsoft, which we weren't. We never made any kind of claims to. It was a community member had integrated Digibyte. So you'd mine Diamond and you'd, that you'd get sent Digibyte for it. Okay. Um, we were actually, um, involved with the city tech for integrity challenge as well. So we got three different things happening all at the same time. And there was this great big, perfect storm of just frenzy media. And all of a sudden we were in the top 10. Um, it was short lived, unfortunately. Um, do I think we belong back there? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, I look at some of the other stuff that is above us and I can't help but feel a little bit disappointed that we have Dogecoin that's higher than us. And yet at the same time, like I mentioned previously, we're the reason that Dogecoin's still around because they implement mm -hmm. the Digi Shield. So that that kind of like it disheartens me a little bit, but at the same time, it's like, eh, it's just Dogecoin that's above us. You know, like we can we are better than that. I know that. Mm -hmm. We're 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 not a meme coin, we're not a joke coin. So what what was the actual question? Something about something, something to get into the top? <laughs> well, what do you think? I guess what do you think the biggest barriers or what do you think like Digibyte needs to do to be the top five or top ten? I think I think it, it, a lot of it does come back to marketing. Like, let's be honest, our tech is solid. Like, it is solid. We've got the scalability down pat, and if people want to be on board with Lightning, you're better off doing Lightning on Digibyte than you are on Bitcoin or Litecoin because you simply can't onboard uh, onboard the planet in a reasonable enough time frame. We're already seeing with the the price going up in the last uh, what are we like three days now? Three days. Yeah. Uh, with with Bitcoin. And already we've got a hundred thousand transactions backed up on the blockchain because it simply can't keep up. Mm -hmm. And so, although that would be better for Litecoin, obviously, because it is uh, four times faster with double the block size, still wouldn't be able to. It, it would basically Litecoin itself would be at its limits right now. That's not cool. So we've already gone and we've got our scaling stuff sorted and and all of that sort of jazz. Um, so I think a lot of it is going to come down both to marketing and brand awareness and spreading the word and people doing things like getting involved like we've got people down at the uh texas um blockchain conference of uh bitcoin bins at the moment we've got a stall there so thank you to the people from the digibyte awareness team who've gone and taken that upon themselves to organize that and have a stall and be there and be a face and be a presence i think we're just going to see a lot more of that kind of organic growth I don't think this is the kind of thing where we're going to be able to go and get on Ellen DeGeneres and give her $4 million worth of Ripple and go, all right, now we've gone up another five places. It's, it's just, it's not going to happen. No, like, it I, is going to be organic. I, I, I think it needs to be organic in order to be sustainable. And also um, 
I really just think it's getting your name out there and for people to know. Cause like I said, when I did the review, I had heard of the project, but I knew absolutely nothing about it. And I had no idea how old it was or, you know, like what it stood for, what its goals were. So, and the fact that you guys have been around this long and that seems to be the case, obviously I, I, having your head down on working on tech and, and getting all that stuff accomplished is very important, obviously, but also like being able to get the word out that you're accomplishing that tech is equally as important. You know what I mean? Yeah, so so this is actually probably a really good question to ask you as somebody who has only recently just heard about it. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the most important way that we could build that kind of awareness or maybe it's additional tech or something? What do you think would be the shortcomings that are preventing Digibyte from being one of those top tier projects? I think a lot of it has to do unfortunately with the fact that you've been around for a long time because there's no like shiny fresh ICO uh, we're going to hype it up. And that's, but you know, all, all the older projects are dealing with that. I think a lot of it is, is staying in, staying in the news, constantly putting out updates. Like you said, you're on, um, uh, block folios, mm. not what's their what's signal. Signal. So that's yeah. fantastic because it sends push updates. I know when I get one from um, my Delta app, I open it up and I will read the article. So, you know, having a blog, having push updates come out, having constant news and stuff and having people like you go on channels and just talk about what's going on and just being open about the project um, and reminding people that, you know, just because you've been around for a long time doesn't make it any less interesting and people just have to listen. That's what it comes down to. Um, and it just, and going to events, you know, having, having booths like that so people can come up and talk and see it makes a huge right. difference, right? Because obviously there's no Dogecoin, Dogecoin booths. So that's going to be, that's going <laughs> to set you apart. Yeah. Yeah, and it's actually it's kind of interesting because you 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 alluded to this earlier, and so basically you were saying that we are only like a small percentage of a small percentage of a small percentage of people that are actually using like blockchain technology in general or or Bitcoin. I think I think so. If you do the the math based on the number of unique addresses or something like that, it's only zero point one percent. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what Crypto Daily came up with too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, so I think, yeah, it was on um, one of Cameron's shows and he basically yeah. was like, yeah, it's that me. But then I, I, I think about it as well, right? So if we're, if we're taking that at face value, I've used myself, I've gone through about 18 different Bitcoin addresses. Yeah. So I'm, I'm skewing the results a little bit, like, yeah. and, and that kind of, so, so if, if we look at that, that's the 99.9% .9 still don't know about it. They still don't know about blockchain and still don't know, like they see on the news and you'll see on like CNBC where everyone's like, yay, price gone up over $5,000. People are like, okay, cool. We're, we're back to this again. This was the same story two years ago or, yep. or 18 months ago in 2017, price going back up. All right then. But I still don't know shit about it. Yep. And so I kind of, I feel like on the one hand, it's really great that we can do these kind of things and keep the people who are already in the space well informed. I think we've also kind of got to set our sights on the 99.9% .9 of people who literally don't know. And I don't know the best way to do that. I really don't. I kind of, on the one hand, EA, yeah, it's nice for Litecoin that they've gone and put their uh, logo in the middle of the UFC ring. I don't know if I would have done that myself where I in charge of the foundation. Um, but you know what? Kudos to them for trying something, right? Like I can't yeah. fault them for trying something. No, um, absolutely. One of one of the things actually that, that not a lot of people know, I, I don't think I've ever actually really talked about this. There was a NBA team that approached Digibyte that I was involved with that was going to I think actually I have maybe I've mentioned this one before. And an NBA team specifically wanted to be involved with Digibyte. They want to put us like on their t-shirts and stuff like that and have like the ringside, like you've got the little advertising and things yeah. and have it on all the merchandise and, and the likes, stuff like that. The problem was it was going to cost a few million bucks, of course. but it was a, an incredibly well-known NBA team and things like that. So we went through this process and I've gone and I put together like a formal, uh, like submission document to them and, and things like that. Maybe actually I should dig that up now that I'm talking about digging up stuff like the Coinbase <laughs> submission. Yeah, I can't hurt. Maybe, Maybe I'll put that out there. Um, yeah. And, and so what, what we basically we found was um, it was great. And they went through the whole process with us right the way through. They shortlisted us. It was us and like one other project. And in the end, we kind of we went to them and we're like, right. So you want seven figures. We don't have seven figures. We're at an impasse here. Yeah, <laughs> like, what can absolutely. we do about this? How can we? 
um yeah and and i mean the flip side as well is i guess this was right at the start of the bear market so i think this was actually like february last year as well around about the same time i was working on the stuff for um the coinbase document um and so had we gone and take like let's say like six seven eight million dollars and put it into that would would the community have got any return from that or would the doom and gloom of the last 12 months have been too much for people to actually even care yeah i don't know i really don't know but i mean so that's that's one of the things i think i think that's how we're going to get the 99.9 percent .9 is that kind of that not so subtle like let's get a i was talking with some of the guys in the digibyte team um in their telegram channels i was like you know what the next time we have a super bowl let's get an ad let's see if we can crowdfund like a few hundred thousand bucks or whatever it is and we'll do a super bowl ad even if it's idea, 10 actually. seconds worth the number of eyes that would see that that's probably actually a decent investment return on investment right yeah, but but you've got to then trust somebody to look after the funds and and stuff like that so it's kind of it's a tough one yeah no yeah. that is that is difficult but uh, yeah it, yeah it's like a cost cost balance there to try to figure out what's worth it versus I think you not going with the NBA team probably benefited you because if you're saying it happened right before the dip in price, then chances are it was probably meant to be that it didn't happen. Yeah. I mean, but on the flip side, right? Like what would happen if say, let's say we went out and we found somebody like some crazy eccentric billionaire, like let's uh, John McAfee, let's say he went out and he paid that those, those funds to get it in there. Would people then care then if, if price of did you buy, you know, we've been in this bear market, but we've got 99.9% .9 of people out there seeing, the Digibyte logo on the side of this NBA team and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like probably not. If somebody else wanted to go in front for that kind of thing, I think everybody, like everybody would be behind this. So, yeah, but in terms of if we had to like crowdsource or something like that, or, or get a whole bunch of smaller little donors, ugh, they're probably not gonna see much return on investment, let's be honest. So, yeah. especially not in this bear market. Long-term, sure, absolutely, without a doubt, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it is a lot to ask of crowdsource. Somebody said you should try like GoFundMe, which is not a terrible idea either. That's um, actually not a bad idea. Yeah. So. What happens if we don't reach like the million dollars or whatever? Does it then just like go back to the original? I think so. Yeah, I think you can that make would it be cool. so that it doesn't. Not, yeah, so it it goes back to the original donors if you don't meet your quota or whatever. That would actually be cool. I mean, the thing is, is obviously like I I don't know about you, but so I. I bought more on the day before Christmas 2017. I bought more Digibyte. I mm -hmm. went out and I actually bought it not in significant amount at the time. I spent like a thousand bucks, whatever. That is now worth nothing by comparison to what it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so I guess the question is, is like how generous are people gonna be when they're all still wrecked from the bear market? Like, I don't know. Maybe they will be. Maybe this will be the something that helps kick off. Maybe we'll go revisit it. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's fun to think about it. It is fun to think about it. Um, so someone wants to have you talk about the Coinbase and Digibyte situation. Are you talking to them? Have you made contact <laughs> with Coinbase? So uh, did, did you see anything that was on Twitter, like the, the back and forth a little bit? No, I have no idea what's going on, to okay. be honest with you. So, so yeah, so Brian Armstrong put this stuff out and he came back and he's like, you guys were spamming me. I couldn't make it out from the noise. So I actually replied and I'll put it out. Actually, I, I've probably still got this here. Let me go and I'll, I'll grab this Medium article and I'll put it like in the chat. I don't know, yeah. you might have to like um, whitelist it or whatever. Here yeah, I will have to, but it's fine, I will. <laughs> you have my permission. Yay. So this is this is a little bit of history and insight into the application. Now, this is what I actually, sorry, any web address needs to be removed. Edit and try again. Oh, man. Oh, no. You sent something before that went through. Let me try this then. There you go. There we go. All right. So I sent this. Uh, sorry, I, I, I put this together as a, like a kind of a summary for people who are curious to see what it is. Now, the other thing is actually, if we go to coin, what is it? Is it listing? Yeah, listing. Um, let me paste this in here too. Let's flag that as a web address. Ah, oh, screw up, whatever. Um. So long story short, we applied to be on Coinbase uh, back in March, I think it was, of last year. We went through. So so in, in terms of like hours spent working on this document, 
I think I spent about 55 to 60 hours working on it originally, going back and reviewing it and editing it and tweaking it. And the funny thing is, is I look at it now and I'm like, holy shit, it was terrible. <laughs> um, and there, there are a lot of things that I would have worded differently or written differently and, and stuff like that, but whatever. It was, it was cool and it's still very valid. And so hopefully this will be a bit of an insight for people to see what kind of questions uh, exchanges ask and how we respond to them. Um, so we went through and we submitted this document. What we did was we actually, we knew where some of the Coinbase people were going to be at a particular meetup. And so some of the people from our team actually took this document and printed it off and laminated it and bound it and physically handed over copies to half a dozen Coinbase employees. That's dedication. Yeah, like I can't fault them for that. I think that's freaking cool. So they they have it. They have these documents and they've got them and they know about us. They know that we're not like some scammy ICO. They know that we're not sitting on like some slush funds and things like that. And even if for whatever weird reason they thought we were, they've gone and listed Ripple. Like, yeah, that I don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't really understand. understand so if you if you have a look and you go on your website and you're looking through like their listing policy, I look at it and I'm like, the last half a dozen projects that they've listed makes no sense. None of them, none of them fit the bill here or whatsoever. But no, then I, I go through and I look at yeah, but I look at Digibyte and I go, tick, tick, yep, cool. We fit that listing completely. So yeah, was the community salty? Hell yeah, they were. Like, and probably for good reason. They're they're kind of going, Well, this is great and all that you your what's the word you're virtue signaling with only accepting certain good projects in your listing policy but then you're doing something completely different over here that yeah. makes no sense like no, no wonder they're know. mad and they were so we're, i mean they were so so specific and like so ridiculous yeah. about not listing projects forever and then all of a sudden it was like boom now we're just gonna list a bunch of them. don't get me wrong like i love basic attention token it's one of my favorite yeah. projects uh, but like I just didn't they <laughs> privacy coin like Zach or Zcash or something yeah, like Zcash that. Yeah, Zcash is well. So the interesting thing, like, like if you do a little bit of digging, this is this is kind of funny. Charlie Lee used to work for Coinbase. Mm -hmm. People on the Zcash Foundation also are working for Coinbase. Huh, you don't say. BAT, I think, is the same. Zero X, I know, is the same. People that are involved with Zero X are also on. Uh, Coinbase's like board or whatever it is. So, shit. I don't know. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I, I didn't know that much, but I'm not. I'm not even remotely surprised by that information. So, yeah. But uh, well, I hope they kind of get their act together and list you guys. That would be <laughs> that would be useful. I mean, it's 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 basically it's funny because between Coinbase and Binance, those are the two most common kind of platforms that people think about when they think about onboarding people. And they're mm -hmm. like, there's a new project that I want to purchase. I'm going to go check there, which is ironic given the fact that Coinbase only has like a dozen different projects on there right now. But for Americans, that's how they go and that's how yep. they find it. They're like, I'll go check Coinbase. I'll get me some Bitcoin. Same for if you're if you've got yourself some Bitcoin, what you what a lot of people do is they'll transfer it through to Binance. And I mean, that's every good project, every shit coin is all there. They're all there. Um, and it's where people flock to. I don't know why. They've yeah, only I been know, around. Like, they actually, so the funny thing, right? And this is kind of, this is actually partly what helped us rise to the top 10 back in the day was Binance launched back at the same time that we were going through that big rise in 2017. So, so Binance have only actually been around for 18 months. Like they're a baby in the grand scheme of things. They rode off the coattails of Digibyte and our city tech for integrity challenge. And one of the, the funny things was, was when you would go and you would share your Binance referral code, mm -hmm. it would include hashtag DGB. We've huh. never been on their platform. Yeah, I know. I was going to ask you about that, which I found really surprising. Um, but yeah, that's bizarre. So they were they were they were riding off of the wave of uh, enthusiasm that we had back at the time to help people come to their platform because if you did hashtag DGB and you're looking through like Twitter and stuff and you're finding out about the City Tech for Integrity Challenge which was a pretty big deal back in the day and oh look here's Binance and here's a referral link yeah sure why not I'll jump on Binance and let's have a look and what do you mean it doesn't actually support Digibyte eh, it doesn't matter I'm here now 
Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Well, you're right. I mean, it is a relatively new. When I when I joined, uh, got involved in crypto, uh, I was all on just Bitrix, Bitrix and Poloniex, which I hated, but just mostly Bitrix. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they definitely they definitely are new in, in that respect. Um, yeah, I was the same. And, and so actually, Bitrix have been really cool because they listed Digibyte. We'd only been around for a couple months. Um, I think in terms of projects that they mentioned, so the funny thing is, is out of the, there was maybe like, I think 80 or 90 projects back in the day that were around that were on Bitrix when we got listed. Mm -hmm. I think there's like 11 or 12 that are actually still around. Oh. So Digibyte is still around. 11 or 12 of those other 100 are still around. So a lot of projects fall by the wayside. Like Bitrix have been around for a long time and they've been really cool yeah. to us as well. And and they're actually, I think we've got uh, USD uh, pairing with them and things. So like, um, yeah, the Bitrix, like I've, I've been talking about some of the Bitrix USD pairings. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's been pretty cool for us because they were, they were one of the earlier pairings, I suppose, in that direct exchange sense. But we've we've got a bunch of other things that have kind of come out of the woodwork as a result of that. And people have kind of seen, oh, actually, you know, this is cool. If, if Bitrix are going to go and support Digibyte, they must be a, a legitimate project because they've got Tether there and they've got a USD peering. So this is this is cool. Let's take a yeah. bit more of a serious look at it. And I mean, we've obviously we've got like the Vert coin guys um, that are over at Vertbase and Coinsark. And we've got Change Angel as well, which does uh, USD to Digibyte mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So. All of that stuff is now uh, over the last twelve months been really awesome to see. So, yeah, somebody actually said you should get Digibyte on Uphold. That's not a bad idea. I don't know um, what you'd have to do to do that, but what is Uphold? Oh, so Uphold is a it's another sort of onboarding. It's not really an exchange per se. As like um, it's a it's a platform that you can exchange into USD and to other cryptocurrencies, but you don't. You don't, tr it's like Coinbase when you buy and sell off of Coinbase. It's not like an exchange. It's just kind of like a platform within itself, if that makes sense, if I'm explaining that correctly. Okay. So, so like for me, I, I, I'm a publisher for Brave and they cash out to Uphold. So when I get my right. Brave payments, it'll send Uphold. And then from Uphold, I can take my, my bat and I can either cash into US dollars or I can change it over to ETH and send it to an address or whatever. But it would just be That's another. Quite cool. Yeah, it would be like another option um, to cash out. But yeah, no, that's, that's not a bad idea. Um, Uphold, nice. Uphold's a pretty good little site. All right, I'll look them up. So um, somebody wants to know how many companies, businesses, et cetera, have, have reached out to you or are planning to use Digi Assets if you can't answer due to an NDA? I totally understand. Um, so I won't sign an NDA. I kind of make a point of it. Um, I've never actually signed any kind of in, even, and I suppose that was partly what bit us in the ass with Binance as well was that we we're like, no, we're not going to sign your NDAs. Um, yeah. <laughs> there, so in terms of companies that have already reached out, I, I already know of a number of them. Uh, I know that there are a number that I myself have proactively contacted and gone out and said, Hey, look, we're coming out with digi assets. There, there's a few dozen already that are very interested. Okay. And if you keep an eye on Digi Summit, they're they're going to be talking a little bit about. Yeah, they're going to be talking a little bit more about it at Digi Summit. Okay, well, that's good to know. So you guys, whoever asked that comment, go pay attention to Digi Summit. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't, I don't kind of want to go and like spoil the the fun or whatever, and and I don't know the specifics myself. So I would rather just say I know that there is a bunch of them. It's a you know, it's a decent amount, but I suppose the thing is is. When you're talking about digi assets, there could be like almost any company out there could use digi assets in some form or another. Like everything from you could do Fortnite's V Bucks on the Digibyte blockchain. How cool would that be? You can mm -hmm. then go and buy it with. You could mine them effectively through buying the Digibyte and stuff like that. You could go and you could send them in the real world. You could pay for V Bucks now all of a sudden with a bunch of things. Um. There, there are so many different different options that you could use Digi Assets for. Um, like it, it's actually mind blowing, and that's one of the things that I want to kind of get that that white paper out. I suppose that mentions some of the different aspects, reasons why you could use it. Because at the bottom, I've, I've got like half a dozen or a dozen different use cases and reasons why I'd want Digi Assets, reasons why it's cool, and and yeah. Okay. Actually, I, I just had an epiphany. So. I would, you had asked me earlier, um, what would be a good other way for you guys to kind of get, uh, get people using the project or get more knowledge out there. What I did notice is when I started, when people asked me if they could donate, I try to keep, um, 
after the review, they wanted to donate Digibyte tokens. I try to keep only a multi-currency wallet on my phone because I don't want to have too many wallet apps and too many seeds and yep. it's just going to become a mess. So as far as I know, besides your Digibyte app, you guys are only listed on Coinomi too, right? We're listed on 18 different wallets, I oh, think. Oh, really? Yeah. Then it just must be the wallets that I was trying to use that didn't have you. What are what are the wallets? So we're not on Trust Wallet. The Trust Wallet guys, okay. I was talking with them last week, and they, they're they keen to get Digibyte on there. It's going to require a bit of div work and stuff, and they want us to kind of do that. But we're all heads down right now doing um, DigiS. It's an auto crypt. So that's kind of had to take a bit of a back burner. Got it. Um, no, it was so basically I've, just that and the engine wallet. I don't know if the engine wallet would, because they support ETH and they support Bitcoin. So I know it's just not ERC-20s. Yeah, so we're not on that one, but I can see people here. They're going, we're on Cedar Wallet. Yep, Jax. Yep, we're on Exodus. Yep. yep. So I've been directly involved like with Jax and Exodus and, and stuff. And what else? Digibyte is not on engine. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in terms of the other ones, like, so, oh, shit, my web server is going down for maintenance right now. That's why it's not up. Right. Is Jack Jax a mobile wallet? Yep. Uh, I'm sure they've come they out with just... the mobile one a, a little while ago. Oh, okay. Because I thought they were just a weren't they just a Chrome plugin or something for a while. I don't remember. I, I didn't wrong? use them too much, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I didn't. Like... I, I didn't use the. I barely. I did use Exodus there for a while before mobile apps. Like when I first got into the space, mobile apps mm -hmm. weren't really a thing, and Jax was or um uh what the hell did I just say? Ex Exodus. Exodus was oh, like yeah, the yeah. only. It was like the first multi-currency wallet, but it was a desktop one, so that's what I used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Somebody's telling me, okay. it's pretty, oh, like, yeah. it's a nice-looking wallet. Um, yeah, it is. The Ethos wallet would be another one, too, um, that you could get listed on. But I stand corrected, apparently, so. Yeah, yeah, so we're on a bunch of them. Like, so we've got our own one as well. We're on Seto Wallet as well, like they mentioned. We're on, um, we're on a few of them, which is cool. But one of the cool things as well, so I've been working with the Coinomi guys, and they've recently implemented DigiID into the Coinomi wallet. So if you've got DigiID and you've got Coinomi, you can just hit the little button at the top right-hand corner. It's their little QR logo. Mm -hmm. And you can scan and you can sign yourself into any any website using DigiID. So at the moment, this doesn't support our Digi password extension of DigiID. This is specifically just DigiID. But it's still really freaking cool that however many hundreds of thousands of people use Coinomi now have DigiID. So I think that's really awesome. I'm yeah, super no, grateful for, cool. for working with the the Coinomi guys and stuff. Um, yeah, we, we have some good chats on Telegram. They're great. They're really cool guys. Um, that's very cool. That's Yeah, I know you were telling me that it was implemented on Coinomi, the DigiID, um, and that's very useful. <clears throat> so I have one more community question for you, and then we can talk about whatever you want or we, you could go or, yeah. or whatever you're up for. So um, somebody would like to know, will Digibyte have shared ventures with other cryptocurrency development teams like Bat, Dash, or even XRP and others? Right. Okay. So this was an interesting one. Yeah. I remember that one on, um, on Twitter. It was, so we've done stuff in the past. Like I kind of mentioned, we've done Digi shield and helping the Dogecoin guys implement it. So Digi shield in and of itself is implemented now in about two and a half dozen other projects. Uh, it's in Bitcoin cash. Uh, the Ethereum difficulty adjustment is based off of it, but it's not a direct implementation. It's in uh, Bitcoin Gold, also used it, Qtum, uh, a whole bunch of other projects, Dogecoin as well. So back mm -hmm. in the day, Dogecoin were having a whole lot of problems with their blockchain, genuinely freezing. And I think it would freeze for like a day and a half at, like at a time kind of thing, just because of the hash power coming in and going out. And they were, they were screwed, really. So the Digibyte developers and the Dogecoin developers got it implemented into Dogecoin. Yay. That's cool and all. But if they're doing that, like let's say right now we were to take our developers and, and the developers were to go and they were to help implement Digi... Well, even like let's let's say, for example, with the... Um, what's that? Trust Wallet. Yeah. If, we, if we're going to take a developer and if, even if it only takes them like, let's say, 8 to 10 hours to do it, that's still 8 to 10 hours that they could be doing working on Digi Assets right now. Mm -hmm. And if they're working on Digi Assets, then that's something that's going to very directly benefit the Digibyte community because they get digi assets now, like maybe that's three days worth of nights, or sorry, three nights worth of work <laughs> for, for digi assets, right? Because these are people that are doing it in your spare time and things um, for, the, for the most part. And so that's now three days that we have to lay the project by helping out getting Digibyte onto Trust Wallet. So on the one hand, yeah, it would be cool to go and get onto Trust Wallet, but on the other hand, digi assets. Yeah, no, so, I hear so you. So it's kind of, 
I mean, it's and it's specifically this particular art um, question, they mentioned working with Dash or working with whoever else. If we go and we do that, that's cool for Dash. Like Dash benefits from that, not Digibyte. Like, sure, it's a little bit of like, hey, we 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 work with them. Hey, look at us. But it's not actually like, what do we actually get out of that? Yeah, we don't no. get anything. We get we get minor publicity. We'll get one one news article published or whatever, and and then everyone's gonna forget. No one remembers that we helped the Dogecoin guys. So. On the one hand, yeah, it's nice because it's it's feel good and everyone's like, yes, we're a community and we're buddy buds and we're all going to get along and sing Kumbaya together. But it's not like, it's not real. So, yeah, hey, no, Fingy, it's nice to see you, man. It's cool to cool to see some familiar faces Thanks here. Thanks for the, the super chat, bud. I appreciate it. Yeah. Josiah's probably a DGB whale. I wish. Wouldn't <laughs> that be cool? Um <laughs> You know, it, it was really disappointing during the bear market seeing my my Digibyte holdings going down to being worth three figures worth. Like that was pretty depressing. So to yeah. say I'm a whale is no. I I do it because I love it. I love the project. I love what they stand for. I love I love everything about this. I think it's cool, man. I think it's yeah. No, I hear you, and that's good. I mean, that's how that's how this space is going to last and continue to progress as people who genuinely enjoy. I mean, you can only do something so long out of obligation before you, you know, you, you burn out. So you, you have to be in it for the right reasons. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like there are days when I'm just like, especially when I'm <laughs> Twitter's the worst. I'm sure you know this, right? Oh, like Twitter yes. is the worst. It is so much fun some days, but then other days I'm just, I want to like just bash my head on a wall because I'm like, why are you people trying to shill me token pay? I am not interested. I know better. Like, no, just, just no. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. And, I get that too. And then I get yelled at because I won't do certain videos or I won't collab with certain YouTubers. And I'm like, but it's my channel. Like I, I have to enjoy you can the do whatever you want. It's yeah. your channel. I have to enjoy the content I'm making. I don't, I don't have a poker face as a human being. It doesn't exist. If I, you, <laughs> you know how I'm feeling. So if I'm trying to force myself to do content, I don't like, you're going to know, and it's not going to be enjoyable for anyone. Yeah. So um, yeah, so no, I hear you. Absolutely. The funny thing is, is then you get people, you're a sellout, you're doing stuff you don't enjoy. Like, there's no winning. Like, you can't yeah, win. I know, I know. I, know. I had you're some, right. somebody came along and they, they were tweeting at me and they're like, why are you talking about this? Like, stop talking about Litecoin. Go focus. Make your own shit bitter. And I'm like, why am I not allowed to like any opinion? If you don't like what I'm saying, I don't care. Don't follow me. Yep, this no, is, I this is my Twitter. I'm... I mean, shit, I've only been there for 12 months, but I signed up to talk about what I find interesting. If you don't find it interesting, that's cool. Go talk about something that you find interesting. I'm not going to begrudge you that. If you want to talk about something else, sweet as. That's so like, funny. People are so weird, man. Like <laughs> Twitter is an easy place for people to be mean and opinionated and forget that there's a human being on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, same for Facebook and, and YouTube even and stuff like that. I mean, you, you mentioned that you've copped flack from certain other YouTubers and stuff for a whole lot oh, of yeah. really, really stupid reasons. Yeah. Like, people are people are great keyboard warriors, but then you meet them in person and they're just like timid little freaking kittens. So, yep, that's the way it works. What can you do? But uh, I mean, the, the interesting thing, right? Like, so, so. Any of the views that I have, oftentimes I will specifically take time to learn about another project or learn about why I have my own particular views before I go and I spread them. I kind of want, I, if I'm going to be telling people something, I kind of want to be informed about it because it's so easy in this day and age to just spew misinformation. Oh, of course. It's so easy. I would, I, I kind of, I mean, this probably comes back to my upbringing a little bit. And so I want to thank like my mom and dad for that. I want to actually be informed about why I have an opinion and to not be threatened when people challenge it. And this kind of comes out, I suppose, in cryptocurrency when people were talking about DigiBiden, about why I like it. I'm okay with people like having a banter back and forth, like totally fine. If, if anybody at any time wants to have a respectful banter, like one of the cool, so I got a lot of respect for uh, Andrew from, I think what, what was his name, eCurrency Hodler from the Litecoin community. Mm -hmm. To this day, he's the only person from the Litecoin Foundation who's actually sat down and had a good chat with me. I have mad respect for him. And so if he's around or if anybody knows of him, tell him. I have a lot of respect for him. I don't specifically agree with everything that Litecoin is doing, but I have a lot of respect for him, the fact that he would sit down and take that time to talk about something that is interesting. And even though the two of us disagree, like he's like super pro-Lightning Network and super pro-Litecoin, 
and I'm not, we were able to come to like like we had a good discussion. It wasn't just like beating on each other and and things. And and I learned some cool stuff. And I'm sure he learned some cool stuff. And I hope that the crypto mug investors viewers who were watching that also learned some cool stuff. So I think people, if they're if they're willing to have a bit more of like an on camera discussion on YouTube, oftentimes we find like the walls come down and people are significantly less guarded and they're not going to say the stupid shit that they would say if they were just oh, smashing 100%. out on Twitter. So if people want to do that kind of thing, then then I am totally up for having that kind of a discussion. And I, I think it's I think we should encourage that kind of thing more, especially from the community to to be engaged in that sort of like we've got digibyte dan actually one of our guys he's been doing a lot of videos and he does them all on camera and he's doing chats with people and stuff and i think that's super cool so i want to i want to thank the community i guess for for being interested in that kind of thing but i also want to kind of heed a warning like don't just be a keyboard warrior yeah there's no. there's and, and no i mean it, this can really apply to all aspects of life people have a tendency to to very quickly formulate opinions and thoughts on things especially if they don't know the person or the background or whatever. And I think that the space benefits from people like you and that guy from Litecoin sitting down and, and ha not hashing it out because there was nothing wrong, but just having a discussion yeah. about why maybe you agree, why maybe you disagree, and that's healthy nope. and normal, and that's how things progress, right? We've so, both just gone our separate ways, and there's yeah. merits to both of them, and that's totally cool. And so between the two of us, we both learned some interesting stuff, and Agreed. hopefully the community did too. And I mean, I guess that's, that's all about that kind of education. So that's, I mean, that's what you do with your channels. You educate people, right? I. <laughs> well, we try. We try to make it funny and interesting. So yeah. Um, I mean that's 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 ultimately what it's all about. So that people can make these informed decisions. Because if they are informed, then they're not gonna go and they're not gonna invest in token pay and they're not gonna invest in BitConnect and they're mm -hmm. not gonna invest in that uh, what was that other one that was like a, a YouTube but decentralized and it was gonna stream stuff from your computer to my computer. Oh, I have no idea. What was that ICO? I don't know. But like, so, I mean, you're struggling right now, obviously, even just with, with general like streams. Can you imagine if I was trying to watch a video straight from your computer through a decentralized version of YouTube? No. Like, Absolutely. it's actually kind of funny. So, so uh, a bit of history for the other people. So we've been working with your internet connection because you do have a little bit of packet loss, which means that when you're using Restream, it doesn't work. And so it's even funny because throughout this video as well, I've noticed in certain places because uh, Hangouts on Air uses a different codec from what what uh, is it re restream? Yeah, restream. Yeah. So because because Hangouts uses a different codec, I can see that there's certain places where a small portion of your video will kind of get like that little freeze frame down there, but your head is kind of over here and it's still moving and we've still got the audio and stuff. But like that little part of like your sleeve will go like blocky for half a second. Yeah. And so I can see it working away, but I kind of, I look at it and I go, would I actually want to be streaming something from your PC? Like, no, I mean, nothing against you, of course, but no. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and so, so for people to be able to think critically about these kind of uh, ICOs and the likes is, is going to be key, especially as we, we saw a 20% jump in Bitcoin price in an hour. Yep. People are going to jump on board and they're not going to know anything like we've got to be there to be able to help these people pick out the scams and tell them why yeah don't get me started because i'm, I'm going to go on a fun big rant <laughs> no i know you're, you're right i mean we camaraderie in the space is important to prevent people from failing newcomers to educate people in the space that that need it to be there to support one another i mean all that all that stuff is important and it's good that at least there are honest people that are out there doing their best like you at least mm. trying i mean that's you know that's really all you can do yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a tough one because on the one hand, it's, it's obviously difficult because people are then like, you get tall poppy syndrome and people are like, why are you like, you're just a digibyte shill. All you do is like digibyte. I'm like, well, actually I still like Bitcoin a lot. If I, if I've got two things, it's Bitcoin and, and, and digibyte. I'm not just a, just a digibyte guy, but <laughs> sure. I like digibyte a shitload more. And that's why I'm on here talking about it because I don't care enough about Bitcoin. Yep. But but then people get like tall poppy syndrome and they're like, stop talking about that. Like all you do is talk. About, you don't you don't know enough. You're you're just here for a, a paid digibyte shill. I've never been paid by digibyte for anything. Like it costs me money for the stuff that I do. 
a lot of money. Everybody <laughs> thinks that. Everybody thinks like uh, even in the videos that I say like, oh, this is non-sponsored, or this is you know I'm not receiving reimbursement for this. Like you're a shill. I'm like, all right, whatever. I mean, like, yeah. what do you you what are you gonna do? <laughs> People are funny, right? Like, walk, you can't win sometimes, unfortunately. I think, like, this is probably, what, the third time we've seen this now. Sometimes you just can't win. I don't yep, know. I, no, no, I, I, I know, I know. Um, but, I mean, I'm all out of questions for you. Is there anything else that you, as far as, like, Digibyte stuff that you'd like to add? Um, I think I think one other thing uh, that we've been doing is we've been doing Dandelion recently. So I'll quickly tell people a little bit about that because I haven't really got the chance to talk about it a bit. So think of it kind of like a VPN that's built into the wallet, kind of like there's already Tor built into the Digibyte wallet, but that requires that you've got to connect to the Tor network and a whole bunch of stuff like this. So this is very much like... What's, what's the, this, this basically it hides your IP address without having to go through a VPN. Okay. So the way that it works is you send the transaction to one person, they send your transaction to another, they send your transaction to another, and we build a stem. Excuse me, I'm gonna grab some water. And so after after a certain number of hops, basically, this you, you've got your stem for a flower, everyone knows what a dandelion looks like, and then after a little while, at a random point, it then gets flowered, and the fluff gets blown off into the blockchain, and everybody gets told about the uh, transaction. And so Dandelion is something that we're doing that is going to help with that anonymity. Uh, the funny thing, like, so this guy's talking about, like, you you must be a Digibyte whale. Well, I'm not a Digibyte whale. I don't care if people come to my house and they, they steal my computer because there's nothing on there. Like, they're that's totally fine. But they can find potentially your address based on your IP address. Mm -hmm. And that's bad. And so that's something that we want to protect is help users so that if they do use the Digibyte core wallet or the mobile wallets or even third-party wallets, whatever, that they're not going to be broadcasting their IP address to the world. And so it's just that extra layer of privacy and anonymity to kind of complement what we've already got. So the transactions aren't going to be private transactions. The blockchain is still going to be auditable from start to finish, but you're going to have that additional layer of privacy. Well, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's a nice compromise as well because I guess we can't go fully private because we've got digi assets. And so part of being that whole public ledger lends itself nicely to digi assets and the ability for people to verify and, and, and validate everything that's on the blockchain. But at the same time, if we can protect people's privacy and protect people with their security, sure. I mean, this, this, this seems like a good thing for us to do. So that's why we're about to implement Dandelion. I think there's currently three other projects that have it out there uh but yeah it's, it's it's we're definitely kind of early adopters in this aspect we've already got it in some of our test wallets i've been running it now myself for about three and a half weeks four weeks and it's pretty cool so uh, for the most part what you're going to see on your i'm tempted to run across the, no i can't find my ipod um We've got it. We've got it in a test build on the the iPod, so you can even swipe and, and basically turn on Dandelion, turn off Dandelion oh, straight from the neat. actual yeah from your mobile wallet as well. So even if you're not out and about and paying for stuff like peer to peer with Digibyte, you can still if you're at home and you're on your home Wi-Fi, you can still slide that on and go. Yep, send it with Dandelion. Sure, it means that it's not going to be done in 15 seconds, and that it'll take a couple of seconds extra to notify the the recipient. But that's kind of like the trade-off, and you've got that option. It's not forced upon you. It's completely optional. So, no, that's good. Yeah. I mean, any kind of additional security and and safety features like that are, are are important. I mean, we do live in a digital age, and if people want to find out information, they're going to try. So it's it's good to have at least some sort of safeguards in place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that kind of I mean, those are definitely our three biggest things. So we've got so Dandelion's coming soon. We've got OdorCrypt. We're going to be replacing the Myriad Grostel. Um, it's going through on testnet. It's still like in terms of full final mainnet implementation could be another three to six months away. Um, but it's it's live right now on testnet and, and it's working and digi assets. Uh, you're going to find out more about digi assets at the Digibyte summit. So if you are in uh, Europe, Look up Digi Summit. I think it's in Amsterdam. Coming in a couple of weeks. Go buy some tickets. Check it out. It's going to be awesome. Any other questions you want to kind of? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think, like I said, I got mine all done on the on my side, um, and I think we covered a lot of what people were asking on Twitter too. So that's obviously what's most important because obviously like, people are going to rewatch it. Um, yeah. So, but I don't know, man. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate you having me here. Thank you so much for uh, 
spreading the good news about Digibyte, I guess. Thank you as well for your review, um, both the good points and the bad points. It's been awesome for us to kind of like, especially as a community, start to talk about some of those things and how we can address them and be better because of it. So, you know, cool. thank you for that. It was, you it was a really good it. review. Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, Hopefully all of your viewers have enjoyed this. I can see a bunch of familiar familiar Digivi uh, faces around here. So that's that's been really cool too. All right, man. Well, we'll have to, you know, maybe in a couple of weeks or a couple of months or something, we can catch back up and you can fill us back in on what, what Digibyte's doing, how everything was implemented and kind of what's going on. Sounds like a plan. So for everybody here, I can see from the Digibyte community, go give her a subscribe, give the video a like and tune into the next one because uh, this is probably not going to be the last time you see my smiling face. Uh, I'm doing probably another live not. stream tomorrow. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good night, man. Thank you so much for your time. Cheers.